All right, welcome to page 11. Here we're going to be working with angles and how they relate to circles and arc measures. So let's review really quick the four basic rules. And that is if we have a central angle right from the center here, and that's alpha and that's A, they equal each other. That's how we get an arc measure. If we pull off center a little bit, we get some more interesting stuff happening. If here's A and here's B and there's alpha, then alpha is going to be the average of the A and the B. It wants to be A on this side, it wants to be B on that side, but it's A plus B over 2. If we keep pulling even further and we get the crossing over here, and that's A and that's alpha, notice we're really averaging A and 0, so alpha is going to be A over 2. And then if we pull it outside, like that, here's A, here's B, and here's alpha. Notice it's almost like we have this arc B headed in the opposite direction. And indeed, we treat it like a negative arc, A minus B over 2. It's really this rule up here, the average, but the intersection is outside, so this arc now becomes a negative. And that's how it works. So these are the four major rules that we're going to deal with over here. Let's get going. Number 11. So we know that QR is 106. All right, good. And PS, uh, arc PS is 50 degrees. So notice these M's off here. That's degree measure. So we're all in degrees here. So let's see what we can get from this. First of all, using this rule right here, we have that 106 plus 50, that's 156. And angle 1 then is averaging those, which would be 78 degrees. Are we okay with that? 106 plus 50, 156, divided by 2 is 78. We'll subtract it from 180, and we get angle 2 is 102. Okay, so that's good. We got 78 degrees and 102 there. Okay, that was nice. Now, angle R right down here is 25 because it's half of the 50. So PRS, that's this one right here, is 25 degrees. Good. Uh, let's see what else we can find here. Um, oh, this PR is a diameter. Do you see it goes straight through the middle right there? So if this is 50, then this is 130. And if this is 106, then this must be a 74. And you'll notice that if we take 130 and 74, we get 204 and it averages to the 102. Oh, that's nice. It worked. So let's see what else we can find. This angle right here is half of 74, so that's a 37. So that's PSQ. Do we have to find that one ever? Nope, I don't think so. Uh, let's write down what we have. Measure of arc SR is 130, 130 degrees. Uh, arc PQ, yep, 74 degrees. Good. Uh, RPS. Oh, so we got to get this angle up here. This is half of 130. So that's 65. Uh, RPS is 65 degrees, and PSR, so oh, we've got to get this whole thing. Well, we could do half of 37, and then this is half over here is 53, and then add those together is 90. The other thing you should be able to see is that, hey, if this arc over here is 180 degrees, any angle inscribed in a semicircle is a 90 degree angle, so we're going to put 90 right up there. Good deal. Let's erase some of that and work on number 12. So with number 12, what do we have? PRS is 32. Okay. And measure of angle 1 is 70. All right. Let's see what we can get on there. 32 doubled is 64. Good. 64 from 180, that's 116. That's good. Now, 64 and this average to 70. 64 plus x divided by 2 is 70. So 64 plus x equals 140. Uh, x equals then, what is it, 76? All right, so this arc right here is 76 degrees. And a semicircle right here makes that 104. Oh, hey, look at that. So if this is 70, that's 110. And you can tell 104 and 116 averaged to 110, 64 and 76 averaged to 70. Good. So this guy here is 52, and this guy here is 38. You'll notice these guys again add to 90. Uh, this angle P is half of 116. That's 
58. Let's see if we got enough to fill this out. PSR, that's 90 again. RPS, 58. Uh, measure of arc QR, 76. SR, 116. PQ is 104. Uh, PS is 64. And measure of angle 2 is 110. Okay, good. Let's try number 13. It looks like here we've got a little bit different thing going on here. We have an angle A, which is going to be outside, which is where we're going to pull in this final rule right here. So measure of angle EFD. So EFD, that's 43 degrees. And EHD is 78. So I'm going to put a 78 in here. Notice it's off center. So this angle H whichever way it's facing is going to be the second rule because we're not going through the center of the circle. But we can do this. Uh, measure of arc BD is 80. 80 degrees. Okay, so let's try it. 43 doubled is 84. So there's 84 degrees right up there. And then 84 plus x divided by 2 is 78. Let me see. 84 go down 6 to 78, so this has got to be a 72 degrees down here. You notice 72 and 84 average to 78. That's good. And notice that this is a uh, diameter, DF, so we can do this one. If that's 84, this is going to be 96. That'll add up to 180 degrees. And here, 80, this has got to be a 28 in there. So 72 plus 28 plus 80 have to add up to 180. And you, we can get the rest of these angles in here. That's a 78, and this is a, a 102, and that's a 102. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Um, and if we wanted to, we could get this angle A by taking 102. Um, ooh, 72. So this has got to be a 50 degree here, right? It's half of this 100 degree arc down here from B all the way to F. And then we could do take this 102, 152, and uh, subtract that from 180 and get like a 28 degrees in here. But let's try this other way and see if it works. 84 minus 28 divided by 2. So 84 minus 28 is 56 divided by 2 is indeed 28 degrees. It doesn't always happen that these two are the same, that this angle measure and that arc measure, it just happens 84 minus 28 is 28. And we did it based on this 50 comes over here and is 180 with that triangle ADH. Anyway, let's fill out everything we can. ADF is 50. These will all be in degrees. Measure of arc DE is 84 degrees. Measure of arc BC is 28 degrees. Measure of arc CF is 72 degrees. And measure of angle A is 28 degrees. Measure of angle E. Uh, looks like we're headed for this guy right here. And it will be half of 72, so it better be 36. All right, starting with number 14. If EFD is 37, OK, so we know this guy's going to be a 74. We can get arc DE right off the bat at a 74 degrees. EHD is going to be 84 degrees. All right, so 74 and what would average to 84? 74, move up 10 to get to 84. So this is a 94 degree arc here. So 84. And let me see, this has got to be 180, so it's got to be 96 here, 96 here, uh, and 84 there. Good. Um, let me see, what else do we know? We know the arc BD is a 60. Okay, so if this is 74, this has got to be 106. Okay, so far, so good. Um... What else can we find here? Oh, this all has to add up to 180. So this looks like it's going to be 26 degrees. Would that make it 180? 94 plus 26 is 120 plus 6. Good. 
And so this guy has to be a 60 degrees right there. Okay, so this angle A should come out either 60 plus 96 plus this, which would make it a 24. Or is that the same thing as 74 minus 26 is 48 divided by 2 is 24. Good, good. All right, do we have them all right now? Looks like this guy right here should be a 57. Is that right? 47. There we go. It's 47 degrees, half of 94. And 96 plus 37 plus 47 is 180. Look, it all worked out nicely. Angle ADF, that's a 60 degrees. Let's put that in there. Arc, arc measure BC is 26 degrees. CF is 94 degrees. Angle A is 24 degrees. And angle E is 47 degrees. Oh, good. All right, number 15. Let's go over the rules for number 15 down here. A um, couple of rules for lengths when they are off center like this, and you have an A and a B and a C and a D, we have that AB equals CD. And this comes, you actually draw similar triangles with angles uh, right there and right there, and then vertical angles in there, and then you draw proportions and cross multiply. That's where that one comes from. And if we are outside the circle, notice we have A, B, C, D. Again, intersection from one point to the other. So here it's A times A plus B. And that's a little bit harder to see. But again, you could draw it with similar triangles. We won't go into the rest right here. We'll save that for the instructional video. And notice that a special case of that is if you have something like this, A and B and an X here, you have A times A plus B equals x times x equals x squared. All right, so let's use those and go ahead and do number 15. Here we have 5 times t is 4 times 7. 5t equals 28. So t equals 28 fifths. Okay, that was nice. Over here on this one, ooh, notice right here that we have the radius is 5. I don't know if that'll help us at all. This side over here is 3. So yeah, it will help us because that means this distance right here is 9. So we have, ignoring the y and the 1.5 right now, well, we could do that. 3 times 3 equals 1.5 times y. So if this is 9 equals 1.5 times y, y equals 9 divided by 1.5. And that's a 6. y equals a 6. So y is 6. Uh, now x. Notice we have 9 times x equals 3 times 3. Let's write that down in a different color. So we're 9 times x equals uh, 3 times 3. Oh, look, that's going to be x equals 1. So x is a 1. Oh, that was good. Now let's try this picture down here. Now look, we have 4 times 9. That's important to realize that we're doing 4 times all the way across here, the A plus B. So 4 times, and I'm going to write that down, 4 plus 5 has to equal A squared if we do this tangent one over here. So that's 36 equals A squared. A equals 6. And now let's try to get B. And we have 4 times 4 plus 5 equals b times b plus 9. Ooh, I don't know what that's going to equal, but 36 equals b squared plus 9b. Uh-oh, this is a quadratic. b squared plus 9b minus 36. And we get, that's a b plus 12 and a b minus 3 equals 0. So we get b equals a negative 12 or b equals 3. I'm guessing that negative 12 inches is probably not a good answer for this guy right here, so I'm going to go with 3. If that's 3, really 3 times 12, yeah, is 36, just like 4 times 9 and 6 times 6. So b is a 3. There we have it.